crikey, g'day, and welcome to another bloody bonanza episode of Topicopedia, mates, <laughs> with your favourite Steve and Nicole. Now grab a cold one, touch the shrimp on the barbie, because we've got a wild yarn for you today. We're talking about this Sheila, who's been, let's just say, exploring the great outback of hookups, and most of them were students. Fair dinkum, that one's a ripper. But don't go walk about just yet, because we've got more coming your way. We'll be chatting about Elon Musk's new army of robots. These high-tech little buggers are out to change the game. You might even need one to toss you another snag off the barbie before long. And then Struth will dive into the juiciest part. Am I the asshole? <laughs> Moments that'll leave you wondering if you're a Dinky D legend or a complete drongo <laughs> in life's sticky situations. So to top it all off, we'll be learning some cracking new words from Urban Dictionary because there was a podcast without a bit of Aussie slang mixed in with the weirdest lingo the internet can offer. So kick back, avoid those stingrays, bastard critters, and let's get stuck in, mates. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. So <laughs> <laughs> you sounded more Australian than I do. <laughs> I, I think I was born to be an Aussie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course, that one being a, uh, well, we were told to be inspired by Steve Irwin. Yes, this was requested by, um, I like it. I like I like someone. a nice request, a nice challenge. Yeah. I can't remember who requested it. I'm really <laughs> sorry. But oh. someone requested it and I thought, ah, oh, that's so good. We've got to do it. Yeah. That is such a good one. That was so, good fun. <laughs> I think it might have been Adam. Okay. I like that. I like that suggest. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> And if it wasn't, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Whoever suggested it, it was good enough we used it. But yeah, so thank you so much. Yeah, we love the suggestions. Keeps us on our toes, doesn't it? Definitely. It definitely actually, actually tries to make us think of if we've actually got anything to talk about, which does also. <laughs> does also I, hope we, I hope we have at least one thing to talk about this week, hopefully. Yeah. I'm sure we'll, we'll dig something out, won't we? Oh, I need to check the feedback form. I don't suppose you've checked the feedback form, have you? Of course I haven't. Don't be so yeah. ridiculous. <laughs> How dare I assume that of you? <laughs> <laughs> so how's your week been? Um, yeah, do you know what? Mixed bag. Um, I haven't been feeling very well. I'm not feeling very well today. I've got oh. a poorly tummy. Oh. As per the usual. So, But it's quite nice because I have... Um, persp- I was supposed to go to a meeting at the school today. My daughter got into trouble. Um, can we ask? I, can we ask the deets? Was it her um, fault? Yeah, oh yeah, it's her fault. Oh, yeah. is it her fault? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I I won't go into it, but um, because I don't, I've only heard her side. I I'm looking forward to seeing what the school have to say. But we had to postpone that meeting today. You've only heard her um, side, and it sounded bad. <laughs> It sounded like nothing at all to start off with. I had three versions and, and I kept saying, I will find this out tomorrow, you understand. Yeah. And then today I woke up and was like, there is no way I can sit and do a meeting in this yeah. level of pain. <laughs> so it's now been postponed till Friday morning. Okay. Um, so I shall find out all the nitty gritty then. Um, but yeah, um, it, unfortunately, because she's autistic, um she can struggle to manage her emotions sometimes let's put it that way um and she gets a bit angry but anyway um but yeah so i was meant to do that i'm quite chuffed i don't have to do that today although i would have liked to have had it out of the way um and to make myself feel better i downloaded the broken sword reforged game which was five pounds off what it was last month when it was released um and it was a re I don't want to say a remake, but I don't even want to say a remaster. It's more of a remaster. And they've taken the old PS1 game, you know, up the res, made it work a lot more smoothly, a lot more quickly, yada, yada. And uh, I thought, yeah, what a comfort game to sit and play when I don't feel very well. Yeah. Um, So that's what I'm doing. And there are some great one-liners in there, honestly. Um, One of my favourites being... Right at the beginning of the game, your main character, George Stobart, he's on holiday in Paris um, and he gets caught up in a bomb explosion. And as he's trying to leave the area, a policeman whips his gun out and and stops him. 
and uh, tells him to freeze. And George says, no, no, don't shoot. I'm innocent. I'm American. And the copper replies, <laughs> can't make up your mind, huh? <laughs> and I just, there are so many brilliant lines throughout the whole of this game. It's well worth playing if you've not played it before. Um, Broken Sword Reforged. Give that a go. If, and, and if you're a fan favourite, if it's a... If it, if it's you know a game you've played before, play it again. They've done such a beautiful job of it. They really have. Excellent. Mm. How about you? How's your week been? Yeah, nothing again. <laughs> nothing to report. Nothing exciting. Nothing to report. Um, I mean, I suppose there was something eventful. I probably still remember it anyway. I just. I know what you mean. I've had a whole week and I don't know what I could tell you about it except for the fact that today I downloaded a game. <laughs> oh dear there is the fact the clocks change this weekend oh they do i'm really sad about it that. it is There's... that's disappointing i've noticed now when i get up in the morning i'm actually having to turn a light on it's like i don't want to have to turn a light on in the morning oh well i'm sad about it because i was meant to go out out this weekend to a halloween party um and my friend said to me last week oh tickets are, are selling quite quickly i said if it comes to it um, then then buy me a ticket and I'll send you the money, right? And she said to me yesterday, I'm so sorry. She said, I've put you on a wait list in case something comes up, but I don't, they've sold out and I think they managed to get their tickets. But um, yeah, I don't have a ticket. Um, so I don't think I'm going to go out, out this weekend, which might be fortuitous as I'm not feeling very well. So that, you know, I'm not sure I would have been able to anyway. Um, but I'm a bit sad and mostly because due to the hour change falling on this night, it means that the event that's normally only four hours long will be five hours long. <laughs> and so I was like, you really get your money's worth for a change. Oh, you there know? you go, yeah. <laughs> but, but not for me. It doesn't look like I'm gutted. I was going to get all dressed up and, yeah, never mind. <laughs> never mind. Wasn't to be. <laughs> do you do anything for Halloween? Um, no, I think I'm taking Lauren to a party. Um, okay, yeah. And that's about it, really. Yeah, I've not got anything planned myself because you know me. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose it's inside the lights off. Week. Why not? Yeah, well, I think that's sensible, and then nobody knocks on your door. Um, but I guess next week would be our Halloween episode, wouldn't it? Oh, that's true. Yeah. I saw, oh, I'm really into Halloween. I absolutely love it. Yeah, we, we're going to have to go all Halloween out next week. Yeah, we will. We will. Um, <laughs> so do send us in your spooky stories because uh, next Oh, that was great fun last year doing this creepy stories. Oh, we stories. had so much fun. Yeah. Well, we're going to do it again, Steve. We're going to do Excellent. it again. So any creepy stories, send them in, topicopedia.online or any of our socials. Um, let us know your spooky stories and, uh, yeah, you'll hear them read out next week. Hey. <laughs> Brilliant. Cool. Uh, so our first topic today, this has been on our radar for a couple of weeks, hasn't it? And we've got, It has, actually, yeah. We've not really known... Yeah, what... Where do we take it? <laughs> where do we take it? So this is well, where a woman... Where does she take it? Where does she take it? Sorry. Everywhere, by the sounds of it. Um, yes. A woman who slept with 122 students in three weeks says parents should be thanking her for sleeping with their sons. Why? That's... Why should they be thanking? Um, <laughs> thanking? Yeah, Kat I'm not sure the that. parents really should have anything to do with it. Do yeah. you? Well, no. I mean, when she says students, these are university students, yeah. so this is all above board legally. Um, people have a problem with that, though, don't they? People... Well, I mean, that is like getting on for forty. Well, it's just over forty and a half partners a week. At that point, I I have sort of read an article about this. So that's before. not really kind of like, um, yeah, it, it's not it's not really a normal. How many is that per day? I've, you say oh, I'm it's not normal, math. but I, it's I still believe like it's... nearly five point eight people a day now. No, but I'm I'm sure she's doing this for her only fans, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, but in some ways, that's worse, isn't it? <laughs> uh, she's I trying to know. profiteer it... on the back. Of just having a, you know, only three weeks away at some uni. But at the end of the day, if you can, why not? Well, still, it's, it's not... 
the, they're still they're still you know they're still young kids at uni aren't they really they're not kids they they're are not. adults they are 18 plus and that's what they're doing anyway okay it is what they're doing anyway look at her still i wouldn't want to i'm wanna... not gonna get a chance to get close to someone like her still let's be i don't want to be the fifth so. or sixth person there that day hey look i'm not saying it's for everyone <laughs> <laughs> But it's you like know, it's like revolving door on your flaps, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, it's not nice. And that kind of thing I think's pretty for me personally, I wouldn't want to get involved, you know. It's a bit but if you're willing to, if that if that doesn't bother you, then you, you go Glen Coco. Yeah. Why why should why should any of us, you know, yuck your yum? That's fine. Crack I did on. read that one of the dads then went to the uni to have a go as well. Wow. Yeah, that's... <laughs> Good. Yeah, Imagine that, that, that might piss off the wife, uh, the yeah, wife a little bit. That's that's assuming there is a wife involved. That's that's a very big assumption I just made, wasn't yeah. it? <laughs> yeah, but, um, but yeah, I mean, that's... It's a weird thing to do. I mean, So basically, though, if she'd worked some three weeks and then all she's got to do is a bit of video editing and she's kind of got content there for like a good year or so. Oh, yeah. For OnlyFans. So you just work three weeks of the year. In fact, you just pay someone else to edit your videos. Of so, course. So, so, someone yeah. who's quite happy to just sit and watch hours and hours of your minge and cut it down into... Steve, well, you could do that <laughs> job. <laughs> that is not such a bad job, yeah, is it? Yeah, if it, if it pays well. Do yeah, you think it'd be not? quite hard work? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I wonder how many wank breaks you get. Well, I mean, <laughs> as long as you get the job done, <laughs> who's to stop you? <laughs> um, yeah, don't, don't want to get yourself yeah. in too much of a sticky situation there, do you? Not on the job. Um, <laughs> so she's, I think she's British, but she lives in Australia. So she came back to England on a one-month erotic odyssey, apparently. Oh, Okay. <laughs> Apparently, helping young men gain confidence. Yeah, of course. Yes. Um, <laughs> look, you can dress it up however you like. You did it for your OnlyFans, and you're capitalising on the fact that lads of that age are very horny. And initially, frankly. slots with Bonnie were capped at 60 minutes each. However, presumably due to her popularity, she later reduced the time down to 20 minutes per man. Per man. You yeah, are, you are on I... the clock when you get when you commit to that. Well, listen, what 18 year old needs even 20 minutes, let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think, you know, they need an hour, that's for sure. But also, I think I read somewhere that she's actually like going to socials um, and, and the, uh, what do you call them? It is socials, isn't it? And getting them to, you know, yeah, she's rocking up at socials you know the lads ones and um yeah still yeah i think it's a very specific kind of um takes a certain kind of person to go and do that job role i think oh certainly <laughs> yeah i mean pff. yeah it's a strange one wow. i couldn't imagine doing that or i don't think i'd even want to be part of yeah um, who am i kidding if i was 18 and at uni yeah fuck it i'd, I'd stick my dick in it you know what i mean <laughs> i mean apparently she made two hundred fifty thousand dollars from her mexican trip i mean if you're making that kind of money i know but then are you ever going to settle down and lead a normal life it's just having one dick a day going to be enough when you've had five or six a day you know? i don't think it works like it works work isn't it <laughs> let's be honest i don't think it works like that i don't think yeah well, by the time like, she does meet a guy she'll be all dicked out maybe she's maybe she wants a, les a lesbian maybe she wants a woman Maybe she wants to be a lesbian. Maybe. Maybe she's just going to give up sex when she retires. Just like, yeah, I'm all dicked Maybe. out. I'm just, I'm just, just going to live alone and live off millions. Or maybe she just needs an older man. Maybe. Who knows what he's doing? Yeah. 
Yeah, because let's be honest, how much fun is she really having with these young lads? Well, yeah, it's just content creation, isn't it? And it's obviously content creation. Making clickbaity headlines for, yeah, for, definitely. For, for these trash websites. But this has worked because now we all know who she is. Yeah. Because of these articles. So, yeah. Yeah. So they go, you know who she is. You can go out to her own fans and you can yeah, watch again exactly. dicked by a hundred and how many guys do we can we what is her name can we where if we got anywhere we it can, was on there bonnie bonnie someone or other bonnie someone or other bonnie someone i closed the window i'm sorry i was researching the next the next bit well look if you if you find the uni lad article for this woman she's called bonnie and she has slept with 122 students during a three-week period i'm sure you'll find her details in case you wanted to go and show support <laughs> <laughs> anyway she, a, she should be giving us commission for anyone we send over there she really should be yeah she's got enough money to do that yeah. she could sponsor us couldn't yeah. she <laughs> sponsored by bonnie the woman who porked a, was porked by 122 students a week <laughs> i mean that that sounds quite topical media i think we i could be down with that yeah okay we don't know where we take it from, do we, Steve? <laughs> <laughs> we'll take anyone's money. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Oh, dear. Mm. Right. Mm. <laughs> what have we got next? Have you got some feedback? I, I haven't got any feedback. I sent you some feedback. One little piece of you feedback. You sent me some feedback. Yeah, you did. Yeah. <laughs> From Kaylee. Yes. Sorry, Kaylee. <laughs> I'm not feeling very well today. Um, so Kaylee said, um, you can talk about my theory that the world's richest people have enough money to be superheroes, but decided to be um, see you next Tuesdays and may basically be supervillains. Okay. I can get behind that. So... I'd love Kaylee to be in on, in on this discussion, honestly, because um, I'd love to know what she means by supervillains to like elaborate on that <laughs> a little bit. Because I don't really. I mean, understand. you always associate people who are rich with being like evil, like they piss the money up the wall on shit, like going to space and you know trying to mind control apes and shit like that. I see. I don't. <laughs> Do you? I I really think. Ah, oh, I'm gonna everyone will hate us now because i said this but i think that people who have a problem with people having a lot of money i i can understand to some degree why it's a bit feels a bit unfair that some people inherit money and things like that um but people who've gone out and earned their money and done very well from it it was not without any degree without you know risk and they had to put themselves out there in order to sort of get it. And I think, you know, people are jealous. Okay, I think that's, that's what it fair, comes down to. A fair view. I mean, but there's a lot of people who don't deserve what they've got. Okay. Give me examples and I'll tell you. Give me an I example. Okay, let's go through. Let's find the top 10 richest people that I can find, okay? Who are the okay. 10 most richest people in the world, according to this article from... The week published, God knows what, 26th of June, it was updated. Updated. It's always dodgy when people put updated. Like, yeah. what did you actually change? You just, like, changed a comma to a full stop or something. Just like, yeah, that's updated. Okay, number one. So apparently the richest person at 270 billion. Go on, have a guess. Um, Microsoft. No. I oh, Bill Gates isn't number one anymore. Uh, no, he's not actually. Okay, go on then. Who is it then? Because Bill Gates is only worth one hundred five point five billion dollars now. Ah, loser. <laughs> well, yeah, but the thing is, though, he does spend a lot of it in trying to in charitable stuff, doesn't he? Oh, so he's not evil. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> actually, do you know what? Evil people can do charitable things. So yeah, yeah but to be fair, because anyway. he's got the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, hasn't he? So they do do a lot of good work with the, their money. So I suppose he's he's someone who's yeah. improved the world. 
And, yeah. you know, you may or may not like Windows, but Windows is great. <laughs> like, it, it really helps, <laughs> like, so many people learn how to use computers. It does, yeah. And it, for the most part, it works, and it works quite well. So there you go. Yes. Yes. Okay, so who is in first place? Who's the richest billionaire I don't know. in the you world, tell me. according to this article? Oof, go on. Oh, yeah, come on. You've got one guess, and you're going to get it. Uh, you know, um, you know exactly who it is. It's either someone who I always a... say is actually poor. Elon. Yes. Oh, that's not who I was going to guess at all. Oh, okay. <laughs> who are you? I was going to say Mr. Amazon or Mr. Um, Apple. Mr. Amazon I've always... is second. I their names. Uh, to <laughs> Mr. Amazon or, <laughs> or Jeff Bezos, as he likes to be called now and again. Um, okay. He's worth two hundred fifteen billion. He's second. Okay. Uh, and he I started Amazon in his garage in 1994. So do you think he's an arsehole then? Uh, I think he's wasted. Why Why is he so bothered about pissing money at the wall to him go and investigate space? I don't know. Uh, I, think, I think there is people who could benefit more from the money. You could take like a couple of countries out of poverty with $215 billion of investment, couldn't you? I mean... Potentially. 215 billion. If that's your money in the event. How many noughts are there in a billion? How many noughts noughts are there in a billion? (laughs) There's nine zeros in a billion. That's That's a ridiculous amount of money, I agree. And he's got 270 sets of nine zeros. Yeah, that's a lot. That's a ludicrous amount of money. It really is. One billion. No one needs that money. One billion is also known as a thousand million. That's a thousand million <sighs> that he's got. That is that is the that no, that's just one. Yeah, so he's that's got two hundred and seventy one thousand millions yeah there you go just to try and uh oh. <laughs> try and put that into terms i mean that's it's actually mind-bending isn't it that that sort of figure yeah um i mean no no one person needs that do they no i think um, you, i think you could succeed in life with a little bit less than that just just a smidge yeah, yeah. um <laughs> I don't know. I mean, ultimately, though, if you've earned your money, it's up to you what you do with it, isn't it? And I, I guess you could say that by investigating space and things like that, that is, you know, quite interesting. I mean, you know, NASA are doing it as well. Um, well, NASA aren't spending as much on it now, and that's why they have people like Elon developing yeah. things so they can buy it at a more competitive yeah. price than they can make it for. That's the idea behind it anyway, I think. But either way, okay. Elon's getting got $270 billion or... Yeah, and then made a stupid investment in Twitter. Uh, Jeff Bezos <laughs> at two hundred fifteen billion. Okay. Then you got Mark Zuckerberg at two hundred two billion. Don't even get me started on Mark Zuckerberg. The only good thing that Meta has got is their Quest headsets because they're so much fun. Um, but <laughs> as far as Facebook goes, <laughs> Facebook is a bit of a nightmare, isn't it? Well, I mean, you could delete your account if you like, Steve. I could do, I could do, but I use it for obviously posting <laughs> posting memes on our account. Uh, yeah, okay. yeah, you do so much of that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> At fourth, you got a two hundred eighty-four billion dollars, Bernard Arnold. Okay. So when it comes to the world luxury goods, uh, he's the most successful kind of business insider. The French okay. overseas L M. LVMH, Moe, Hennessy, Louis Vuitton, Empire, and more than 70 brands. So he's got, yeah, Moe and Shandon, Louis Vuitton. I'm probably announcing all these brands terribly, but there you go. That shows that I never actually buy any of them. No, uh, that's they're fair. all for people with a bit more money in their pocket than me. Oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah. So at fifth, Larry Ellison, $179 billion. He is the chairman and chief office technology officer at oracle which he started in 1977 he stepped down in ceo in 2017 but still owns around 35 percent of the software giant right okay so that's software that he's got okay. uh, bill gates is at six with 163 billion dollars according to this i think i just googled it and it was less than that one well, i know i mean i would say that if you don't support these people 
having the amount of money that they have, then um, don't maybe use their products and services. And I'm pretty sure we're all guilty of using <laughs> Amazon <laughs> Windows. <Yeah. laughs> you know, I think um, it's very easy to sit and say, but I these don't... people are all dicks because they have a lot of money, but... I mean, maybe they are dicks. I'm not, you know, I'm just trying to sort of play devil's advocate a little bit. It doesn't make them inherently bad because they have succeeded. However, the traits that you have to have to succeed to that extent, you probably are a bit of a dick. Fair do yeah. <laughs> but, you know, yeah, I don't know. I, I feel like each and every one of them would be such a deep dive to really find out who they are and what they're like and what their spending habits are and what they're really doing with that money. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I think the one that gets my goat the most is the royal family. We all know I'm a bit of a royalist, okay? Yeah. <laughs> um, but it gets my goat because they actually put more into the public pocket than they're taking from it. Like, yeah, and, and a lot of what they have is self-funded by the duchy and, you know, rentals and things like that. The crown estate yeah and all that kind so, of stuff yeah and and they work they work bloody hard and you know honestly i don't think it's a life of privilege all right they have money but i don't think that's necessarily a privilege when you're in their position and you know you're born into an institution where you are hated so bitterly by people who frankly don't understand <laughs> what your life is about and <laughs> what you have to do and just assume that because you have money, you have everything, which is not the case. Yeah. Just saying. I think I think they live a bloody hard life. Um, but, you, yeah, I mean, if you head over to... There is a web page which explains really, really well how the royal financing works and the government grant that they get is a fixed amount which is less than the revenue that they pay into the government. So they are actually <laughs> contributing to the country in so many ways more than just sort of like publicity. That's the thing. If you kind of so. got rid of that, then you'd have to sell off all their assets and then their assets wouldn't be making us money. Uh, when you say that, it would, their assets would surely still belong to them as a family, wouldn't they? I don't know. I, I, do they not belong to us? No, it's theirs. Oh, okay. That's why they're making the money off of it. Oh, okay. Oh, well, they're making... It's... Okay. So, um, yeah. So so they they make money. Obviously, they work. <laughs> they have, like, quite important jobs, and they work very hard every day. Um, but, yeah, they, they create their own revenue, which they keep themselves from the duchy, you know, um, and, and, and things like that. And then, uh, yeah, I, I can't really remember, but yeah, a lot of, a lot of their, their they, they do put a lot of money into back into the country. So yeah, besides just, you know, what everyone thinks to be, you know, tourism and things like that. It's, it's not, that's the tip of the iceberg, honestly. Fair so. uh, the others on this list, I don't recognize any of their names, so I'm going to fire them at you and see if you know any of them. Uh, Steve okay. Ballmer. Not a clue. Okay, so he was a former CEO of Microsoft between 2000 and 2014. He's worth 150 okay. billion. Obviously, good time to be at Microsoft. Uh, Larry yeah. Page. Who's Larry Page? He is one of the co-founders of Google. And he's worth. Is he the one that in in Practical Jokers when Joe's shouting Larry? That is that who he's shouting for? Oh, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> could Larry. You, could you imagine if that Love is a Larry that. and he turns around? He's like, oh yeah. Yeah, I have a billion. <laughs> I have one of my 147 billion. Why not? Why not? I, I don't even need a billion. I'd be just give me a million, mate. Yeah, I'd just, be, just I, a I, I, trust me. I'd spend it right. I wouldn't let it go to. Oh, I'd totally, totally go to yeah. my head. But like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I'd spend it right, man. I'd, I'd change my life. I'd not do any drugs, I, genuinely, and um, yeah, I'd have a good life. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, we we never actually mentioned Liam Payne, did we? Well, no, because we recorded a little earlier last week. We didn't did, we? yeah, yeah. Liam so, Payne. So, yeah, go on. Let's have, we'll, we'll we'll take your take on this. My take. Yes. Um, I think he was a bit of a troubled young man. <laughs> um, 
did a lot of drugs and alcohol, obviously wasn't um, doing too good, and fell from a third floor balcony at his hotel in Argentina, uh, whether it was intentional or not. Um, intentional falling. Yes. Okay. <laughs> we'll word it like that then. Okay. Yeah. Well, I don't know if it was intentional or not. Um, some new sources claim that it is, and some more reputable ones say that we do not know. So um, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, maybe he fell, maybe he leapt. But either way, I think it's quite sad. Um, but what is quite interesting. I think I saw on is... TikTok or something someone linking it to um, the P. Diddy situation. Oh, I'm not sure about that one. Yeah, I know. But, it seemed a bit wild to me, but uh, yeah, but you never but know. I do know that his one of his ex girlfriends had a, something like a week prior had a um, cease and desist order put on him for contacting her and her family repeatedly. Um, he was blowing up her phone, her mum's phone, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, even like years after the relationship ended, and he's got a new had a new girlfriend. Um, and yeah, so uh, it's been speculated that it was interesting that it happened so soon after that had happened. Apparently, his current girlfriend had left the holiday a few days uh, before. It's unsure whether they it was on good terms or not because <laughs> they'd been on that holiday together and she'd left early. Yeah. Um, so yeah, who knows? Who really knows what's going on? But. Uh, I'm sure it's very difficult for all the family and friends and colleagues um, that he's left because it was quite a shock, wasn't it? I think nobody really expected that one. No, um, but there again, you know, they don't really advertise the struggles, do they? You don't really know what celebrities are going through. Some some are being a bit more open about things now. For uh, example, Selena Gomez, who is now a billionaire, uh, well done to selena um she um she is very open no she's lovely is she? she's okay. lovely she's very open about her mental health struggles with bipolar disorder um which i think is quite good i think it's it's good to sort of normalize these conditions um and you know it's quite quite um what's the word <laughs> um I don't know. It's nice, isn't it, to have somebody in to, to relate Relatable, to. Relatable, yeah, yeah, um, and to sort of think, ah, oh, you know, this person that's incredibly successful and incredibly gorgeous and incredibly talented, they have the same problem as I do. See, they're he just human. You yeah, know? it's just true. quite. It's quite nice. Gives them this human yeah. element. Yeah, it's very validating. I think that's the word I was looking for. So, okay. Yeah. Well, for reference, I'll just list the other two of these top ten. Yes, please. Uh, Warren Buffett, $143 billion. Who's that? Um, he was 11 years old when he first bought stock of Cund Forbes. Now in his ninth decade, Berkshire Hathaway chief executive, known as the Oracle of Home, o- o- Omaha, is one of the most successful investors of all, as, is one of the most successful <laughs> investors of all time. Um, okay. Like Gates, Buffett pledged to give more than 99% of his fortune to charity. Oh, okay. Wow, so, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, Sergey Brin, 138 billion. Who's that? Born in Moscow to Jewish parents. Um, him and his family left for the US when he was six due to anti Semitism. Co founding Google with his Stanford l- classmate Mar- Larry Page. Ah, Served as okay. head of technology from 2001 to 2011. Oh, cool. So there you go. So big money to be made in tech. Definitely. Definitely agree with that. So the reason I wanted to get onto Elon Musk, um, did you see this week them displaying the Tesla robots? No. Okay. So what can a Tesla robot do? It's called Tesla Optimus. And they brought them out at an event. Let me find your YouTube link just so you can you can give you. I, I'd, I'd love to know your honest thoughts. I'm going to send you a YouTube okay. link. Okay. Okay. Um, and you can tell me um, how good you think these are. So 
uh, nine days ago. We'll go with that one. Sorry if I just deafened everyone listening because I clicked on the link to send to you. Um, oh. Which it may or may not have caught. Right, so I've sent you that link. So All right, let me have a look at them. Whoa! Sorry. Loud. Oh, you can actually hear my... Uh, yeah, it is a loud start to that. So these are Tesla robots that they've gen- that they've created, obviously. Yeah. It's very okay. iRobot. <laughs> they've been criticised for being, like, very much just, like, oh, taking is. the design of iRobot. Like, yeah. See, yeah. It, it's, a, it's another oh, case of Elon seeing a film and just copied it. <laughs> I mean, possibly... Maybe it's a bit of a marketing strategy. Oh, it is a bit. It does move quite like it's weird because some of the way it moves is so human and some of it is so robotic. Do you know what this reminds me of, though? What? Have you played the game Detroit Become Human? No. Right. That's your homework. So okay. Go away. Go, <laughs> go and play Detroit Become Human. It is such a good game. It is a game uh, set in the future where um, robots like this uh, called androids in the game are um, an everyday part of human life. A lot of people own one as maybe um, a butler or a maid or a cook. You know, the, they could look after your children um, and they are everywhere, you know, um, and in the game. Um, they they look human mostly. <laughs> um, they've they've given them skin and things like that, and they, they're hyper realistic. Uh, but in the game, uh, there is a lot of prejudice against androids, and it's kind of it's it's an interesting game that I think sort of questions your sort of morals. I suppose it's really it's, it's well worth a play it's very very good very very well made uh, but it just sort of reminds me of that the way that it's you know you see it watering the plants and yeah. <laughs> i just think yeah it's it's detroit become human yeah. it's actually I mean, I, happening i think i would love you know something to like help me keep the house clean and tidy something like that 100 uh, percent yeah <laughs> I probably wouldn't have an issue with that. Um, the biggest issue here, though, is they obviously they've dressed it up as being like completely robot, robotic, and autonomous. Yeah. And they brought them out at an event, and <laughs> they were actually being controlled by humans. Oh. So people okay. were asking for like. So that's probably why in some of these videos you're seeing going, "Oh, that's a really human movement," and it's actually just mimicking someone that's telling it what to do. Okay, that's, yeah. So then it becomes a bit misleading because, you know, you know how much can these robots do on their own? Uh, and look at an, argu- uh, an article. It says, what can Tesla's Optimus do? Apparently this is what it can do. It can walk forward, squat down, sort objects based on colour, balance on one leg, lift an object with one arm, and squeeze an object and lift it. Okay. Whereas they have so these got a ways to go. <laughs> yeah, they they have these coming out and having full on conversations with people and giving, you know, thumbs up and all that kind of stuff and different gestures and, you know, do the peace sign that kind of stuff. Okay, so we are not at Detroit Become Human level just yet, guys. No. <laughs> <laughs> so he got criticised for it being somewhat misleading. Yeah, I mean it's great that they can do all this kind of movement and stuff. You could potentially use them robots for like sending into places where humans can't go. That's true. Maybe you could yeah. use it in, you know, when you have a nuclear disaster or whatever, and you're sending people, sending things in to like dismantle it or whatever, or maybe just generally yeah. the decommissioning of anything nuclear. Yeah, so that kind That's of stuff really... is probably good for <clears throat> being yes, controlled definitely. remotely like that. But we are Bomb still disposals and recovery and yeah. things like that. Yeah, firefighters. They could be firefighters. Yeah, exactly. Firefighters. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, I get the idea. I mean, it's obviously not there yet, though, is it? No. <laughs> <laughs> Needs a bit more work, I think, a bit more investment. <laughs> yeah, apparently there's no price on these yet, um, but Musk has estimated it will cost less than half of a Tesla car, uh, placing it around $20,000. Okay, yeah, okay. all right. <laughs> I could probably have a couple of those then. Good. Have to... <laughs> this, this is after that other guy's giving you his... Bill, million Larry After Larry's oh, giving no, you a million you get a couple oh of, yeah yeah that's true yeah thank you Larry love you <laughs> 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 
<laughs> yeah, he's very much of like selling the um, the illusion more than he is of what he's actually got under his, you know, developed so far. Is what I always feel with him. I think well, I, this is what I meant when I said about people, business people having to have a certain personality type to get where they are. You have to oversell what you've got. You have to bullshit your way to some degree. Um, and it obviously works because these people have, you know, all of the monies. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's, is it particularly moral? No. <laughs> No, not really. Is it massively misleading? Yeah. But that's not selling a product, is it? No, it's true. Anyway, it is worth noting that the richest people are getting richer. Yes. So now the net worth of the world's billionaires has increased from $1 trillion in 2000 to over $7 trillion in 2015. Whoa. So, well, do you know what, guys? Maybe stop ordering on Amazon and yeah. start ordering from you know your small local businesses, which are, let's be honest, the ones go onto our website it. and order yourself some Topicopedia merch. Order some merch, please. Yeah. Order some merch, and in a few years' time, buy a baby hog nose from me. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. That's how you support people. Yeah, yeah, whatever a baby yeah. hog nose is, but yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> it's a little snake they're so cute that's oh, what i'm going to be breeding okay yeah <laughs> <laughs> they are cute have you seen one before um probably i just you've not shown me any oh i'll send you some pictures uh, yeah, of mine you've, you've never got your they snake look out like for me. pokemon they don't look like snakes they look like pokemon <laughs> it might take me a minute to find a picture mind <laughs> but like i will pokemon. find a picture and i'll send it to you they're so ridiculous ridiculously cute if i can find a picture oh, i could just search google couldn't i i'm sat in front of a computer no, no, let me send you mine mine are the cutest oh <laughs> yours, yours. <laughs> <laughs> i don't Why know what there is to be cute about a snake to be honest with you oh they're so cute I they're not really know. they're like mm. they got no arms That's... or legs or anything well is that really what what does it for you? <laughs> Just Arms you kind of legs. expect to, yeah, animals to be. No, I don't. <laughs> yeah, I suppose not. <laughs> yeah, here's some pictures. Have, <clears> have, <throat> have some pictures. Adorable. So cute. If you say so. You don't think? Mm, no. Maybe that last oh. one is fair. Yeah, they're not bad, are they? They're not bad, they although have, we're not bad. Just, for for snakes, <laughs> when you think of a snake, they look a bit like dragony, don't they? I don't know. They just don't. They just look like Pokemon. They look like they shouldn't be real. I suppose, a little bit. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> you love it, really. Steve, sell snakes for me, please. Oh, okay, go and buy some snakes. Take them off your hands. There you go. <laughs> I don't have any at the moment. Give it a few years. Give okay. Few years. Well, if you listen to this and it's not 2024, man, just think people might be listening to this in like 2030 or 2040. You poor bastard. Yeah. <laughs> Could you imagine? Really I, wonder how, to that? I wonder how, how well it <laughs> ages. Uh, <laughs> Terribly. Oh, God. If I think we've can I've cancelled us several times at this point already, then um, imagine what it'd be like then. Yeah. Could you imagine? Will when... things go the other way? Will we be more liberated? Will freedom of speech be back in? Like, who yeah, knows? Can't see that happening. No. <laughs> no. Will we have cash at that point? Uh, probably. I think it's going. I'm. I hate to say it, but I think it's going. Oh, oh dear. Hmm. <laughs> It surely has to be, have some. You probably you must have to have some sort of token way of paying, just in case you've not got, you know, an internet connection at the time. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I don't think the British, well, the public will go down without a fight for the cash. I suppose but not. it's all about control. I don't it's know. all about. I don't know they any... need to know where your money is at all times. They need to know where it's coming from. They need to know where you're putting it. And 
it's all a bit it's big brother con- is always watching you say it's about control but at the same time it's also the fact that you know there isn't enough physical cash to if so if bill gates wanted to withdraw all his money tomorrow there isn't enough physical money in the world to do that no so that's that is ludicrous though <laughs> that's what? not what cash is for cash is not for hoarding shit tons of it is there it, like that's not what it's for it's you know cash is for you know exchanging of money you know if you're at your everyday sort of usage of it isn't it well yeah that's why i think it'll always have a place to be honest with you oh i hope it does i and really it, hope it I does think it will. but i think the government uh are going to try to get rid of it oh conspiracy theorist. very hard nah not really i just <laughs> think that's exactly what's going to happen I, no no we've talked about it before haven't we and i think i was a bit like no nah, that won't happen and now i'm like if they're trying to do it, I swear to God, they're slowly moving towards it. <laughs> yeah, I see it happening. <laughs> Let us know what you think at home, topicopedia.online. Let us know if you yeah. think we are slowly inching towards a cashless society and how you feel about that. I don't carry cash. Do you know, I very rarely <laughs> do. I, I, really, I really ought to. The thing is, is I do, unfortunately, do a lot of my... Um, shopping and everything online, I very, very rarely actually go anywhere. But when I Unfortunately, do, when I... I do have cash, I lose it as well. Oh, you tit. Yeah. How do I... you lose cash but not, like, a bank card or something? Oh, because I just use my phone, don't I? Contactless on my phone. I don't even carry a bank card not... now. How do you not lose your phone? <clears throat> Glued to me. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't we be absolutely lost without our phones now? Yes, that's become the vital... It thing really to carry. Has. You don't have to carry a wallet, a camera, mm. an MP3 player, your keys. <laughs> like literally, it's all in my phone. Yeah, yeah. Um, right. Okay. So I'm trying to find where we are. Oh yeah. Am I the arsehole, Steve? Yes, you are. I oh, thank you very much. <laughs> where my badge was prized. <laughs> But shall we find out if these people are assholes? Yes, let's do. Let's, okay. let's let's judge them. Let's be judging people. I like judging people. Okay. So, am I the asshole for refusing to lend money in public after being asked in front of the whole family? Ah, oh, I feel before we even delve into this, I feel like when you were a kid, if you asked your mum in front of your friend if they could stay longer. They, it felt like you you knew you were putting the pressure on a bit more. Yeah, you know? like, that's true. Yeah. I wonder if that this is what's happened here, like a manipulation Maybe, tactic. Yeah. So I was at a family gathering, and for a while now, one of my closest re- relatives has been uh, asking me to lend them money. Um, I've helped them out several times, but they've never paid me back. That day, they asked me again for a significant amount of money in front of everyone, almost like they were trying to pressure me into saying yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, honestly i was fed up with the situation so i calmly told them that i couldn't keep lending money because they never turned return what they borrowed before i also mentioned that if they couldn't fulfill their commitments they shouldn't keep asking me for help i said it in a calm tone but they clearly got upset and a few other family members looked at me like i was the bad guy for calling them out like that after that the whole atmosphere changed and now i'm wondering if i was too harsh or if i was right to set a boundary am i the bad one for saying no in front of everyone no they're the arsehole for asking and then thinking they could guilt trip you into giving it yeah i must be agree i think you know if if someone's it's, it's, it's normal sometimes you might need a bit of help you know you ask a, a relative for 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 help in hand but for god's but you sake you keep on the low, download don't you you and then you pay it back low, and you pay it back afterwards yeah you can't just it's not like a a pot that you can just keep dipping into you should never expect you know and if if you're gonna borrow money like you have to be to know that you are able to pay it back if you're not able to pay it back it's your problem not your relatives yes as martin lewis says always pay off the balance in full absolutely oh i love martin <laughs> he's good so are <clears throat> you the arsehole absolutely not i'm i think you know depending on their situation and circumstances it might have been a bit embarrassing for them to have been turned down but i think also 
you have to sort of understand that you've asked in front of all those people. <laughs> um, and yeah, no, I think fair enough. Okay. <clears throat> Here's one then. Am I the asshole? I go to a small liberal arts college. As a result of being very small, two pertinent matters emer- patterns emerge. Everybody knows everything about each other's business. It's the first one. The second one, the pool of people that are A, single, and B, actively looking for something romantic and or sexual, and C, of a compatible orientation with you, is very small. Okay. There's this one girl that's physically very attractive who's single and wanted to date slash sleep around a lot. So essentially, all the straight slash bi guys were into her. I was initially attracted to her too, but when I saw she was sleeping around a lot, my interest waned. She and I knew each other from some classes, and we hung out a lot in study groups, um, saw each other at parties a lot, uh, during which she would flirt me. As I said, I found the whole sleeping around a lot, especially with almost all the guys I know, thing gross. So I wasn't into her, and politely ignored it. My friends asked me why I turned it down when she clearly um, was clearly into me and is really hot. I said that I didn't want to get SCDs. <laughs> the point I was making was half a joke and half a statement that she slept around so much that I wouldn't be surprised if she caught something. Some of my friends laughed and one said I was an asshole and being disrespectful for speaking about it that way. So is he the asshole or is he not? Was it a joke? Um... I mean, it doesn't sound like it was said in front of her. No, that's true. So I don't think he's sort of shamed her. You know, he's not like tried to be horrible, but I think that's a very. He, I think he's just explained his reasoning. To be yeah, honest. <laughs> pretty much. Yeah, I mean, which I and I think it's a valid reason. You know, it might be something that bothers you. It might not be. It does bother him. He's decided not to speak with her, and I think that's incredibly valid. Someone asked, he was honest. You know. Yeah. Okay. If, I mean. Yeah, I'll take if, that. Yeah, he's not the asshole. I just think if you ask someone a question, be prepared for the answer. Yeah. <laughs> if you're not going to like it, then ask the bloody question. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> there you go. So, no, not the arsehole. Um, Okay, so I. 30 female have been married to my husband 32 male for five years our wedding wasn't exactly a fairy tale his family never really approved of me for a variety of reasons none of which were valid but that's a story for another day uh they did didn't attend our original wedding because they thought we were moving too fast and they said some pretty hurtful things at the time fast forward to our to now our relationship is stronger than ever and my husband suggested doing a vow renewal next year I thought it would be a great way to celebrate how far we've come and I was excited about it. But here's the issue. He wants to invite his family, the same people who refused to attend our original wedding and caused so much drama. I feel like they don't deserve an invitation. Why should uh, they be a part of this special moment when they couldn't even be there for us at the first time round? I told my husband that I won't invite them and now he's upset, saying it's a fresh start and they've tried to be more supportive lately. Uh, I still feel like they never really apologised for their past behaviour and I don't want to pretend like nothing happened. But now he's accusing me of holding a grudge and not allowing his family to make amends. Am I being unreasonable for wanting to keep this moment between us and the people who truly supported us from the beginning? Honestly, I don't know. What do you think, Steve? I think she's being an asshole there. I think it's a perfect time. Yeah, get them there and then you can say, fuck you, look, we were right, we've lasted, we've seen it through. We're, st- That's we're still true. going strong and, you know, no matter what you thought, we proved you wrong. Yeah. I think you do kind of have to, you know, allow people to make amends. Like obviously, if you choose not to, then you probably wouldn't have any contact with them at all, would you? Um, the fact that they are obviously still in your life suggests that, you know, you, you haven't, you know, I think, yeah, maybe... It's not the worst thing in the world. I I kind of do understand her reasoning, but at the same time, I don't know. Like you say, yeah, let let them be there. Unless they, you think they might actually cause trouble on the day. Um, but that's your husband's family, and he obviously does want them there. And I think you have to, you know, look at your marriage vows a little bit <laughs> and remind yourself what you signed up for. <laughs> um. 
Yeah, a little bit arsehole I understand it to a degree, but if, you know, you, that's your husband's family at the end of the day. Yeah, so, I, yeah, I'd say she'd be an arsehole. Yeah, okay. I'm going with that. I'm sticking with it. Yeah, I think that's fair. <clears throat> okay, what about this one then? Uh, I'm 17 male, having a big birthday party in a few weeks. It's going to be a big mix of friends from school, my girlfriend and a few family members. My parents are letting me throw it at our house and I want everything to go smoothly and look good, especially because this is the first uh, time some of these people will be meeting each other. The problem is my 15-year-old sister uh, has recently started dressing in a way that I think is inappropriate. Super short skirts, crop tops, basically stuff that covers barely covers anything. I'm trying to con- not to control what she wears, but it's gotten to the point where my friends make comments about her and I really don't want to deal with that at my party. I asked my parents if we could tell her to dress more modestly for the party or if not, maybe she should just not come. They got really mad at me saying I was being controlling and rude. My sister overheard and now she's upset, calling me sexist and saying I'm embarrassed of her. But honestly, I just don't want my friends making weird comments or my girlfriend feeling uncomfortable. My parents are making me feel guilty, even suggesting it. But I just want to have a chill party without drama. Um, so is he the arsehole for not wanting his sister at his party unless she changes how she dresses? Yes. Yes. There you go. That is. Yes. It is being controlling. Your sister can wear whatever the goddamn fuck she wants to wear, <laughs> and it is not your business. And if you don't like comments that are being made, then tell your friends to shut the fuck up. It's not, you know, she can dress how she likes, and and your parents obviously feel the same, pal. So, sorry, but you are the arsehole. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Okay, so my fiancé is uh, 35, uh, male, and I am 32, female. We're planning on getting married in two years. He lives with me in my apartment in the city. And this year, his mother died, and her house is split between my fiancé and his sister. This house is about 45 minutes away from where I work. My fiancé works from home. His sister lives one state away. All right, American. Uh, (laughs) He he knows of my plan of buying a house, uh, and he suggested that I just shell out money so he can buy his sister out of her share in the house they inherited. Uh, She would gladly sell her share of the house, except she has some conditions. First, I can't redecorate the house too much since she has a lot of childhood memories. Second, her bedroom should be reserved for her and her husband when they visit, meaning I have to keep her bedroom the way her mum kept it over the years and have it available for her any time. I didn't think it reasonable. I've told my fiancé that I want a house I can actually live in and decorate on my own without restrictions. I found a house in the suburbs 25 minutes away from my workplace that I really like, and although it is triple the price... Uh, I would have paid if I just helped him buy his sister out. Uh, I made an offer and the seller accepted. I am hoping to move in by the end of this year. Note, I would be solely paying for everything on this house. My fiancé is pissed that I bought it and thinks I'm being selfish. Am I the asshole? Yes and no. (laughs) (laughs) You're on the fence again. (laughs) No, I'm not on the fence. I just think some parts of it is reasonable and some parts, parts less so. What do you think, Stu? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, obviously, financially, it makes a lot more sense to, to have that home still. But yeah. I would tell her to shove her conditions where the sun don't shine because it is your yeah. house at that point. And although you might have a guest room, you want everyone to be able to feel comfortable going in that guest, guest room. What's the point in having a room that, you yeah. know, only his sister and her husband feel comfortable? In? Probably the husband doesn't even, won't even feel comfortable in it because it's going to be... No, and you, from a, from a you know, you know a past time before exactly. they were together. So, and what if you wanted to <clears throat> turn it into an office that doubled up as a guest room, like you wouldn't be able to? And you know, if if you own the house, it's yours, and that's you know, the point is you'd be able to do what you want with it. And if you can't, then that sucks. So, I fully agree that that doesn't sound like a good deal, and I wouldn't want to go for it. Um, is she the asshole? I mean, so. <laughs> she might be funding this on her own, but you still have a fiance. You're, you still have a partner who's affected by your financial decision. 
And even though it's your money that you have earned, I still think your partner deserves to have a stake in that discussion, you know? So, but the the real asshole here is the sister. Oh, the sister's a <clears throat> complete asshole. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I agree. But I do think you're not n- not completely the asshole. No, you're not the asshole. But you shouldn't have like put an offer on a house without at least consulting your husband first and getting him somewhat on board because I think that's a bit wrong. <laughs> Isn't it? <laughs> it is very much so. Yeah. We are nailing these people today. We are judging. We are judging. Judge, jury, and executioner. <laughs> I had 50% custody of my son, who is 13, and recently just got 100% custody. My son's mother has three kids from her first marriage. My son's mother and I get along well enough to co-parent effectively, but she has done some crazy despicable things in the past when we first broke up. She has never apologised or even hinted that uh, she's the least bit remorseful, and I've never forgotten about it. My son's mother left, lost her job nine months ago, was hit with a bunch of life situation and deaths in her family, all at the same time, which led to depression, and apparently she never looked for a new job. She told me she was flat broke and had maxed out all her credit cards and was in the process of being evicted. She didn't straight come out and ask me to help financially, probably because of her ego and probably because she doesn't know if I had the means to help her. I've never paid child support as I have 50% custody and his mother has never tried to file for child support since we first split and she was denied. My own income used to be around the same as hers but then since i have started making much more and putting into my savings and investments my wife makes good money now and so we're in a good place financially right now i could probably help her out financially and get her straight but instead i just told her that i would take my son full time until she can get her life straight is he the arsehole i feel like he's done that because out of revenge and i feel like that yeah, because at the beginning he says that um, when they split, she did some vindictive things. Yeah, but he's always... that he's never forgotten, and it's like, well, that obviously does come into it. Otherwise, he wouldn't have mentioned it. Yeah, but he probably doesn't trust that he's going to get the money back. Maybe he's got reason. Maybe. He's got reason to to not have the trust. Potentially, yeah. Um, but I mean the way he's worded it is she's never apologised or hinted that she's the least bit remorseful and I've never forgotten about it which doesn't suggest it's a trust issue it suggests that he's just a bit sour about it still Um, I think it's I think it's like incredibly mean to say I will take our son and you can deal with it she's obviously got other children as well she's obviously gone through quite a lot um, and I think I think he is being an asshole, actually. Yeah. Do you think he should give her the money? I don't think he should give her the money. Um, but he said he could. I, I don't know. I just think, you know. I don't know what his I wife think... would make of it. No, I agree. I, I don't think he should give her the money. But should he say, "I'll take the our child like full time"? I think that's that's mean, isn't it? That's you know, I mean, yeah, it gives her a, a break financially, but he could take the money that he's going to spend on having the child full time instead of fifty percent and help her out a little more. You know, like he doesn't. It, it's it's effectively the same, but he's chosen a way to do it that's going to hurt her, and I think that's quite nasty. I think that is a bit of an assholey thing to do. Okay, you could so just say, you could just say, no, I'm not going to help you, but he instead he's gone. Actually, yeah, I'll help you. Give me our son. You know, it's just a bit like <clears throat> unkind. I think he's been nasty. Okay. So, so do you think he's the arsehole, Steve? I'm guessing no. No, I don't. I, I don't think he he owes her anything. No, I don't think he owes her anything. I agree with that. But I also think he's gone out of his way to be a bit spiteful. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, okay, divided opinion on that one. If anyone <laughs> at home can give us uh, their opinion and explain why Topicopedia.online, let us know in your feedback. Um, okay, so 
my 26 year old daughter is getting married next year she is inviting my brother his two teenage children and his wife of four years so my brother the bride's uncle asked me why his two adult and one teen stepchildren aren't invited i explained that they have only met the bride once and have no relationship with her um as an aside neither his wife nor any of his children have spent any sent any type of congratulations on the engagement my brother called me anti-family and rude for excluding half his family i let him know that it's the bride and groom who choose their close family and friends to invite um, am I the out here for supporting my daughter in her right to choose who attends her wedding? Does being the bride's uncle require us to invite his stepkids? Steve. <sighs> Tricky one, isn't it? Once again, coming to weddings. <clears throat> yeah. And who and who is invited. So political, aren't they, weddings? Like, you can so get it wrong and yeah. so upset people very easily. I mean, because you could just um, do that way, just invite them to the evening do instead of the day do as well. Yeah. Um, I think there are lots of reasons not to invite people. Um, and sometimes it comes down to things like cost. Like, do you, it's, it's expensive to have people at your wedding, isn't it? Like, it, it very expensive to have people there. And if you're paying a lot of money per person and you're, you know, this is your money that you're putting into this, you might want to spend your budget on people who you feel closer to. And who you feel, you know, have celebrated you a bit more. You know, I, I think I can understand that. Um, is it a bit awkward? Sure. Um, but a lot of people don't invite sort of extended family to weddings or some people don't even allow children at weddings and things like that. Um, I think you can't just be entitled, feel entitled to go to someone's wedding yeah because they're paying a lot of money for you to be there and yeah i think that's fair isn't it yeah that's fair that sounds fair to me i'll take yeah. that yeah yeah i you know i think sometimes you just have to have a bit of understanding and maybe not take it too personally yeah yeah fair. i'm glad we could agree on that yeah <laughs> cool. um yeah, uh, is that all there is another? Sorry, let me send you my meme of the week. Just oh, we've so... got one more. We've got one more. Okay, cool. I'm just sending it you now just because otherwise I'll lose it on my phone. Uh, okay. Where's the email? You know, we've got... Um... I was wondering if I was being the arsehole here. I love cooking and love to host. Bearing in mind, all of us, including... Uh, oh, all of us, including me, are Muslim and we eat halal meat. One of my friends became vegan last year. When we go out for meals, we try to accommodate her by going to places that facilitate vegan food. That limits most of our choices and most places that serve halal food don't cater very well to vegan food. So we moved into a new place and I decided to invite friends over for dinner. I called my vegan friend beforehand and asked her what she would like me to make and what brand she wanted me to use. I assured her I would cook everything separately for her so there would be no cross-contamination. Food was served and she liked it. One of my friends brought for dessert a homemade cheesecake that her mum made i had already brought a uh, vegan dessert for my friend so i assumed no problem well she had a meltdown and screamed at the person who brought the cheesecake i asked her to calm down and not to raise her voice in my house she took offense and left and said i didn't appreciate her mind you for a whole year we catered to her choice of food and places to eat out later on we decided as a group um, that we couldn't let her selfish antics affect us in a group chat, we discussed going out in two weeks for a new halal buffet opening in town, uh, which we checked and it didn't have vegan products. Well said, the friend straight away. Object. Uh, well, sorry. Well said, friend straight away objected, and so I told her when we next go out, you can bring your own food and we can enjoy eating out. Is he the asshole? I think after that display, she's very very lucky to be invited anywhere at all. To be yeah. honest. <laughs> yes. That's I mean. It you've been invited somewhere and they have accommodated your, your, you know, requirements. Um, so what's the problem there? There was an alter, there was a vegan alternative for you. What's why, why the drama? Yeah. The, I mean, there's no need to cover that. I think it's very nice for them to bring a cheesecake. 
I think that's lovely. Uh, yeah. and, and and I just want to throw this out there. Cheesecake is always welcome in my house. Yeah. If you want to bring a cheesecake, <laughs> I'm not vegan. I also do not require halal. I will pretty much eat anything put in front of me yes. um, and, and will do. So please, please. <laughs> I could just um, demolish a cheesecake right now. Oh, God, a nice white, my white chocolate cheesecake mm. with raspberry mm. coulis. Mm. Mm. I'm going to have to get oh cheesecake for tea now. Oh, I don't have that option, unfortunately. <laughs> I'll, I I'll, wish. I'll send you a photo of it just so you can share the, the enjoyment. Oh, so cruel. I've got a poorly tummy, so I'm on tomato soup and bread tonight. Oh. Which I enjoy, but it's just... Well, it's not cheesecake, is it, let's be honest? <laughs> not quite, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Okay. Right. So, where are we, Steve? I don't know what I'll do do with you with the stuff in. Um, I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Just some words from the Urban Dictionary. Ah, that's, that's the one, Let's see what it? it gives us. Uh, Go on, then. Exfornication. Oh. The purification. Is that when you link up with your ex? <laughs> that's a good one. That's probably, Isn't that's it? Better than Is what that it... better than the actual... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, go on, then. This says... The purification of one's mind and body, thus the X. Example one, I went to the spa and got totally exfornicated. It was great. Example two, he went to the Zen temple to receive a state of exfornication. Yeah, mine's way better, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's, um, okay, another one, slurty. Oh, it's, oh, okay. It's either, right, my guessing now, um, it's either a hybrid of like slut and flirty so mm-hmm. you know you're being like yeah really slutty to be flirty <laughs> or or you're slurring you're so drunk <laughs> it's a hybrid of being of slurring and flirting okay so it on, says a uh, combination of flirty and slutty referring to the extreme state of being flirty affectionate and immodest when drunk Oh, wow, it's all of the above. Wow, yeah. I'm good. <laughs> Often characterised by <laughs> hugging slash kissing when the victim has sent out no vibes or invitations to do so. As a person in this state is filled with remarkable self-confidence and believes that anyone, regardless of sexual orientation, would be honoured by his, her touch. In some cases, uh, can be found endearing, but in others may find it annoying or offensive. Um, so, an example, oh. girl one, in a slight shade of st- st- shock. So, um, she deaf just kissed me on the mouth, girl two. Oh, don't mind her. She's just slurty. <laughs> I think we've all been a bit slurty at one yeah. point in our lives, haven't we? <laughs> I suppose that's true. Yeah. Um, okay, what about Dan Young? No, I don't know. Not, not even a scoop on that one. Sorry. <laughs> Taken from the nouns Dan and Young, but using the adjective to mean Trez sexy and good in bed. So you'd say, well, he's cute, but he's no Dan Young. Or that guy over there, he's such a Dan Young. Oh, okay. Oh, there you go. You, there learned, you go. learned a new word, a phrase. That was what, That's two words. Yeah. Still be your well, money on that. Thank you very much, Urban Dictionary. Yeah. <laughs> that's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be trying to p- pick up some Dan Youngs while you're slurting. Always. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm not going out now, am I? So I'll have to. I'll be too sober for that. <laughs> nah, no, I'm I'm very well behaved now. Back in my back in my youth, not youth, you know what I mean. Back back in the day, it was. I might have been a little prone to a little slurt after a few drinks. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, not so much these days, no. That's a great word. We'll have to try and cram that word in next week's intro, I think. Oh, uh, yeah. What style is it next week? I don't know. We'll... Uh, I do know. Okay. but you, And you're never going to get that word in there, <laughs> trust me. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I'm not going to say, because I, I, I think it's fun to leave it as a surprise for people. But yes, I do know what we're doing next week. Excellent. I'm glad someone knows what we're doing at some it point. It has been somewhere. suggested, Yeah. <laughs> Okay, have you got a meme for us this week? I've got a meme for you. After you won last week. Oh, did I? Nice. Yeah. Probably won't win win this one then. I should have gone down the same route. I always pick one before you actually tell me if I've won or not. 
Uh, so oh, this wow. one is a picture of Sooty and Sweep. Do you remember Sooty and Sweep? I do really well. I used to watch them loads when I was yeah. little. So come kids to you. Oh, they were brilliant, weren't they? Um, yeah. Who was the guy that used to um, be with them all the Matthew. time? Matthew. Matthew, yeah. He was yeah. good. Um, so, <laughs> so this one says, for sale, 90s iconic Sooty and Sweet puppets. Any offer accepted. Just want them off my hands. <laughs> <laughs> very good very very good oh dear oh yeah i think that's quite funny actually yeah. <laughs> so for mine uh we've got a couple in bed and they're looking they're actually looking quite happy okay i think um but maybe looks can be deceiving because she is saying to him you must be an anesthesiologist because i didn't feel a fucking thing <laughs> <laughs> the savagery oh, the absolute savagery but um yeah. well yeah, then so but surely a... surely them looking happy isn't the greatest picture to have for that then maybe they're bit she's been really passive aggressive maybe she's leering in, into that full sense of security like yeah yeah it was great it was yeah. great it was great <laughs> you actually freaking shit though yeah. <laughs> isn't that funny yeah maybe yeah, maybe. yeah. <laughs> through gritted teeth i don't know uh but yeah head over to topicopedia.online scroll down a little bit on the home page so that you can cast your vote for your favorite meme of the week and we'll see next week who won nice oh i nice. didn't tell you did i no uh, so I got a doctor's appointment the other day. Oh, uh. Yeah, I mean, that's not the joke. Oh. So I found out I'm colourblind. Okay. Came right out the orange. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> it took me a moment. Sorry, I'm not quite with it, am yeah. I? <laughs> not on the board today <laughs> i'm not prepared okay uh what do you Go call on. oh what do you call a well-balanced horse i don't know stable <laughs> <laughs> nay <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> oh dear oh right do you want one that's, that gets cancelled yes please okay okay uh so it turns out americans do use a metric system Oh, okay. Yeah, they use a nine millimeter at school. Oh, <laughs> <ow>! <laughs> that's noise. You've just cancelled us in America. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Um, I've, so, got, I've got one more. Oh, go on then. Go on, it, go on then. It. Okay. Okay. What's worse than two girls running with scissors? I don't know. Two girls scissoring with the runs. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> That's a no. grim thought, isn't it? <laughs> I don't feel very. Well. I don't want cheesecake anymore. Yeah. That's for sure. Definitely no no chocolate cheesecake no for me. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> um. <laughs> okay. How about? Did you hear about the constipated accountant? Nope. He just couldn't budget. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh dear. dear. That's bad. Uh, what what does Lord of the Rings and Brokeback Mountain have in common? They both feature glorious rings. In both films, someone's ring gets destroyed. Yes, I knew it'd be about <laughs> the ring somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I once asked a Welshman how many girlfriends he's had, um, and he fell asleep while counting. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good, I really like that one. <laughs> anyway, once again, thank you ever so much for joining us for another episode of Topicopedia. Do head over to Topicopedia.online where you can vote for your favourite meme of the week and fill out our sexy feedback form. You can also Google us, find us all over the internet and contact us via any of our socials with your feedback, topic suggestions, jokes, memes, whatever comes to mind. Send it to us and we will see you again next week. Bye-bye. Bye. See ya.